Hello friends, welcome to Limitless Life. So thrilled you can join me. I'm Larry Hutton and once again, we're just gonna get into the Word of God and learn how some, how, how some awesome, how awesome, yeah, that it is, how awesome God is. God's an awesome God. He wants you healed if you need health and healing in your body. He wants you prosperous if you need to get out of debt. He wants you walking in peace and joy if you need to get free from negative emotions. Whatever it is in your life, no matter what area, God wants you blessed. That's what Jesus is all about. He is a savior. He is a healer. He is a deliverer. He is a financier. He is a miracle worker. No matter what we need Jesus for, he is available. And God says in his word, we can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So it doesn't matter what we need, it's all available. And thank God it's available through his mercy and through his grace. <laughs> mercy, man, you may think I don't deserve it. Nope, you don't, but you'll get it anyway. Uh, you haven't done this, you haven't done that, you shouldn't have done this and you should have done this and well, you need mercy. And then grace, well, it's all based on what Jesus did, not based on what you have or haven't done. So you need mercy and grace, hallelujah. And thank God his mercies are new every morning. And thank God his throne is called the throne of grace. Never leaves never is not available. It's always available. We can come boldly anywhere, anytime. You can come to the throne of grace in your car, in, your, in the shower, in your study, at the office, at the grocery store, no matter where you're at, God's throne of grace is available right now. You know why? Because that body you live in, the house you live in, you live in that house, but somebody else does too. You know who that is? <laughs> yeah, Jesus, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And because he's in you, then I remember we used to sing a song, he's as close as the mention of his name. Yeah, that's because he's inside you, praise God. It's like I had this picture of, of God being so far away. Oh yeah, okay, way up. You know, there's the first heaven, second heaven, third heaven. Oh, God's so far away. He doesn't know what's going on in my life. He doesn't care about me. You know, how could I ever have a God that created the universe uh, be interested in little old pee on me? And then I found out when you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, God moves in you. <laughs> he puts his spirit in you. Woo. Bible calls it in the New Testament, first fruits. This is the first fruits because we're going we're gonna to get all the rest. We only see in part and know in part, but when we leave planet earth and get our glorified bodies, and then the Bible said we'll, be, we'll know even as we are known. Man, I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to that. But in the meantime, we can rule and we can reign in life by this one Christ Jesus who lives in us. And that's what we're all about on Limitless Life is understanding God said, I want my will in your life to be done the same way it is here in heaven. When you get to heaven, there will be no depression. So why not learn to live free from it now? When you get to heaven, there won't be a bad temper and uncontrolled anger. Why not learn to live free from that now? When you get to heaven, there's not going to be any lack, financial poverty. Why not learn to live that way now? Well, Brother Larry, you're just, you're just not being real. I am being real because these are things that I have learned. I started preaching in 1980, but in, the, in about 1977, I started getting a hold of the truth of God's Word and the truth that Jesus is not some religious figure. He wants to be my friend, my savior, my healer, my, my physician, my financier, my peace, my joy, my wisdom, my righteousness. He wants to be everything in my life. And when I let him start being that, then I started living what I call the dream. I'm living the dream. It's the dream life when I don't have down days. I don't have stress-filled days. I don't have strife-filled days. When sickness tries to come against me, I don't allow it to stay. Poverty and lack, when it attacks, don't allow it to stay. Jesus said we can do these things. It's all in the B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. Yeah, that's a little corny, Brother Larry. You're right. But guess what? It's true. It's the Word of God that's alive. The Bible calls it quick. It means it's, it's actually living. Well, Jesus and the Word are one. The Word wouldn't be the Word without Jesus. And so that's why it's alive. It's got the life of God in it. And that's why we spend time here always studying the Word of God and eating, partaking, taste and see that the Lord is good. And so we're going to get back in. We've been doing a series called Dr. Jesus is in the house. 
Dr. Jesus lives in this body along with me. And uh, I'm glad he's here. Um, I'll actually be with him when I leave this body and I go to heaven. Uh, then I won't have to have him living in an earth suit with me anymore. <laughs> I'll just be with him and he'll be with me and we'll be together for eternity. Along with our family members that have gone before us, we'll get to be with them for eternity. I'm looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth and glorified bodies. No more sickness, no more disease, no more pain. Uh, no more nighttime, no more sleep, we don't have to sleep anymore, no more weakness, physical weakness, your glorified body, which is more real than this physical body we're in, uh, won't have pain, won't have sickness, won't have disease, won't have weakness, uh, won't gain an ounce when you eat all you want to eat. <laughs> Some of y'all looking forward to that, aren't you? Anyway, uh, let's talk about, let's get back into what we were talking about. Dr. Jesus is in the house. He wants you healed. He wants you healthy. He lives in that body with you so you can learn to partake of him. We've been talking about that and we'll continue to do that uh, through this week and at least next week anyway. Maybe we'll see if we want to go any longer. But I just want to keep helping you. I want to keep helping all the people. We continually have new people joining and watching. And so I just had yesterday, I had a pastor email, a pastor that had started watching. They were watching Andrew Womack and getting blessed by his teaching. And they watched me on his uh, television network, Gospel Truth. By the way, if, if you watch Gospel Truth, Brother Andrew does not charge any of us that are on the network bringing you the word. He doesn't charge us anything. It's all, it's all sown from his heart of love to us. So you ought to support Gospel Truth. You ought to support Andrew Womack just for doing that if you're enjoying me or some of the other ministers on the program. But anyway, I was teaching on um, Gospel Truth and this, this pastor um, called or, or sent an email and said, now, you know, what do we need to do to get you to come minister at our church? And I, I emailed him back and I said, invite me. <laughs> no, no, that's too easy. No, no, seriously. I just said, invite me. If you're a pastor uh, or, or you're in a position to talk to your pastor and, and he likes the teaching from us, invite me. I mean, uh, I'm not looking for places to preach. I have plenty to go after all these years, but, but I'm always looking for divine appointments. So you invite me and God tells me to come. I'm coming. I don't care what size the church. I go to big giant churches. I go to little teeny churches. I don't care. I just want to go and be a blessing. Somebody asked me, well, what do you charge? Because, you know, there are some ministers that say, well, I have to have so much money to come to hold a meeting for you. I have to have this much money. I don't do that. Never have, never will. And so, you know, some church, mo well, most churches pay for your airfare, your car rental, stuff like that. But I go to churches that they don't have the money to pay for your airfare and car rental. I don't care. God tells me to go, I'm coming. I just want to be a blessing. So let's get back into what we've been talking about. Dr. Jesus in the house. And we started uh, looking at a, uh, a story, a true story that happened when Jesus was on the earth. Remember the story of the guy that comes through the roof? He ripped off the roof of unbelief and got down there and got healed. That's the one we're looking at. And so we're going to pick it back up again in verse 17, Luke chapter 5. And verse number 17, it, it happened, it says, I'm reading from the New King James, it happened on a certain day that Jesus was teaching and there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring him in and lay him before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop, let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. That means they had to take the roof apart. <laughs> Verse 20, when, they saw, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this that speak in uh, blasphemies? Only God can forgive sins. But when Jesus perceived their thinking, he answered and said, why are you guys trying to figure this out in your heads? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or be healed? Be forgiven, be healed. Which one's easier? Verse 24, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I'm telling you right now, get up, take up your bed. In other words, get, 
get up and you're going to be so strong, not just healed, you're going to be able to carry your bed and, and then go to your own house. And he immediately rose up before them, took up on that where he lay, departed to his own house, glorifying God when they were, and, and they were all amazed, all the people in the house, they were all amazed. They glorified God and were filled with fear, not filled with faith. I pointed that out before. Seeing miracles doesn't fill you with faith. If it did, these doctors of the law would have been faith giants because they continually for three and a half years saw Jesus doing all kinds of things. Blind Bartimaeus, the woman with the issue of blood, Jairus, I mean, one of their leaders, they sure heard about that. One thing after another, they kept seeing miracles. Another great miracle right here, didn't produce faith at all. They just kept trying to find fault with him. But uh, they, they were filled with fear saying, we've seen strange things today. So in other words, they weren't used to seeing God move in their services. They were in the synagogue all the time. They were telling people about God all the time of the old covenant, but they were never showing God that he's real. Not just hear about God, but showing his acts. Man, wow, let's prove God is real. Let's show God that he's, let's show people that our God is the only living God. See, these guys, what the Bible says is they had a form of godliness but denied the power. And we have many churches throughout the world today that do the same thing. They, they talk about Jesus and they talk about God. They have a form of godliness, but they deny His power. They don't let the Holy Ghost move. They don't have gifts of healings, work in the miracle, special faith working in their midst. They don't, they don't lay hands on the sick for people to get recovered. They don't pray for people to be filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in a brand new heavenly prayer tongue. They don't do these things. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Well, we don't want that. So that's why we're studying these passages. Look at verse 17. Let's go back to it then. Verse 17. So on this particular day, Jesus was teaching. We found out he was teaching the word of God. He only taught what God, what God told him to teach. So he only said what he heard his father say. So he's teaching the word of God. These Pharisees and doctors of law we discussed last time were not sitting there with their faith turned on. They weren't sitting there expecting. They weren't sitting there as students wanting to learn from the master. Um, they wanted to master him and, and kill him. So, so they were just sitting by. And we talked about that last time. Make sure you don't just sit by. You may not want, you may believe Jesus where these guys weren't, but still you can go to church and not hear what's being said. You can let your mind wander. We talked about that. So make sure you're always, uh, anytime you're in a meeting, anytime you're listening to the word, even when you're listening to television, man, sometimes I've done it too. Cause I, so I can't accuse you of anything that I haven't done. I've done it too. Listening to my favorite preacher, one of the preachers that I love listening to on TV. And all of a sudden my mind will wander and I'll miss what he said. Thank goodness on my TV, I have a smart TV. You can actually rewind it and, and then play it and then catch back up. <laughs> but, um, don't just do like these guys did in verse 17. It said they were just sitting by. Oh, yeah, show us your stuff, big dog Jesus, who do you think you're so tough and so cool? And, and then he does this miracle right in front of you. And whoa, you, whoa. And then you say, man, this is strange. We're not used to seeing this kind of stuff. But they still didn't believe, still didn't produce faith in them. Well, okay, so Jesus is, is teaching the word of God which means they, even though they were sitting there, they could have heard what God said and they could have been healed. And I'm going to prove to you they needed healing. Remember, I made this statement last program and other programs. I made this statement. Jesus wasn't able to heal everybody everywhere he went. He was able to heal everybody who would believe. Not one single person that believed him didn't get healed. They all got healed. But there were people that would not believe. And that was the case here in this story, which is why we wanted to point this story out. We're going to see what the one did that got healed and then what the multitude that needed healing that didn't get healed, what happened between the two. Well, no, let's go on reading here. It said the doctors of the law, these teachers of the law, and these Pharisees were just sitting there sitting by, sitting back, not expecting, not exercising faith, not believing, not wanting to learn. They had come out of all these different towns, packed the place like sardines, every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem. And now watch this last statement. This is so good. This proves right here beyond a shadow of doubt. If you've ever heard a preacher say, it's not God's will to heal everybody, I'm going to prove right now it's a doctrine of devils. It is not a doctrine of the Bible. People can try and pull scripture out of their settings and try and make them say things they don't say. But if you will let God be true and every man a liar, 
you will find out it is God's will to heal everybody. Even when people like these people in this story don't get healed, it was God's will to heal them. And you're going to see that plain as day. This is one of the most powerful scriptures on this subject that it is God's will to heal all. Just like it's God's will to save all. You can't be saying, well, it's not God's will to save all because everybody's not saved. Just like people say it's not God's will to heal all because everybody's not healed. And they'll, they'll try and use examples. Well, I believe God didn't get healed or they prayed for God and didn't, God didn't heal them, so it's not God's will. They try to use people's experience to prove it's not God's will. If you did that, then, well, I could prove it's not God's will to save everybody because, look, this person's not saved. I witnessed to this person. They did not get saved, so it must not be God's will to save them. No, that's not true. Read the will. Read the Word. The Word said, God is not willing. I think that has to do with God's will. Isn't it? God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Bible says, whosoever, Romans 10, 13, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Doesn't whosoever include all? The Bible said, God so loved the world in John 3, 16. God so loved the world that He gave His only God, that whosoever believes in Him. See, so it's God's will. And, but, but this passage here is just so adamant, so in your face. If you meditate on it, you can just read over it and miss it, which is what most people have done. But notice that last statement, that last sentence. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of who? Jesus. Hmm. Jesus, God, the Lord. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. All right, so why was the power present? I'll tell you this right now. If Jesus would have been teaching anything besides God's Word, the power would not have been present. Because Acts 10, 38 said, How God anointed Jesus, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed the devil. In other words, if Jesus said things other than what he heard his father say, he would not have been anointed to, to heal and do miracles. But because he only did what he saw his father do and only said what he saw his father or heard his father say, then when he was teaching, you've got to rightly divide the word. Make sure you read things in context. Context is he was teaching and the power of the Lord is present. He was teaching, and the power of the Lord is present. He was teaching God's Word, so no wonder the power of the Lord was present. God watches over His Word to perform it. All right, so the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Who is them? Who are them? <laughs> Who is that them there that that's talking about? <laughs> However you want to say it, you need to find out who them is. Who them are, because it says the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Notice it doesn't say the power of the Lord was present to him, the one who was going to come later on in the meeting. Because remember, the guy hadn't come through the roof yet. We know he got healed, so we know the power of the Lord healed him. But notice it does not say the power of the Lord was present to heal them uh, or him coming through the roof. He hadn't even come through the roof. It doesn't say the power of the Lord is present to heal the one coming later on or, or the power to present. Uh, it doesn't say the power of the Lord is present to heal them that it was God's will to heal. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say the power of the Lord is present to heal them that were good enough. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say the power of the Lord is present to heal them whose timing was to be healed because people try and preach, well, it's just not God's time. Yes. Now, today is the day of salvation. Look up the word salvation. Salvation includes healing as well as forgiveness. Today is the day of salvation. I'm preaching me happy right now. I hope I'm helping you. Today, right now, is the time of salvation. Right now, God wants you. God wants every single person saved right now. He wants every person healed right now. He wants every person set free, delivered, made whole. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. So who is the, who is the them that he's referring to? Well, you know who it is when you read the context. It says there were Pharisees and doctors or teachers of the law sitting by. They had come out of all these different cities. And the power of the Lord was present to heal who? Them. 
Hmm. So these Pharisees and these doctors and teachers of the law were sick. Oh, no, Brother Larry, they weren't yet. Yeah, they were sick. I know they were sick because God didn't make a state, mistake. It says the power of the Lord was present to heal them. You know what that means? Them needed healing. <laughs> or, or, or else God made a mistake. Maybe, you know, just maybe for once God made a mistake. Maybe he was sitting up in heaven and he looked, looked over the banister of heaven and, you know, he sent his power into that building because he knew somebody would be, you know, God knows everything, future, pre past, present, future. And so he knew God, a guy was going to come through the roof later on. So he wanted his power there so he could be forgiven and healed. So he sent his power into the building and he realized the power was present to heal them. And then he thought, oh, no, wait, wait a minute. I made a mistake. It's, it's not my will to heal them. Why, why did I send my power to heal them? <laughs> let, me, let me withdraw that power to heal them because it's not my will to heal them. No, listen, friends. He's not sitting up in heaven going, oh, no, why did I do that? Oh, myself. <laughs> oh, myself. Some of y'all got that. Some of you missed it. What do we say? We say, oh, my God. But what's God going to say? Oh, myself. <laughs> I sent my power to heal them, and it's not even my will. Why did I do that? Duh. No, listen, friends, since the Bible said, come on now, since the Bible says the power of the Lord was present to heal them, then guess what? It was his will. He didn't make a mistake. He sent his power to heal them. So he wanted them healed. Well, you and I have already read the whole story several times, the last couple programs plus this program. That's why I keep reading it every program. I want you to get a hold of the story as so, so as we break it down and go through, you'll know what we've read and what's happened. So we know the man came through the roof and got healed, but none of them got healed. In fact, they all sit there and said, wow, this is strange. And they were in fear, not in faith at all. Whereas we saw they, the man was in faith and he got forgiven and healed. That's what happens when you're in faith. So the power was present to heal them. That means them needed healing, proving to us, even though it's God's will to heal everyone, everyone doesn't get healed just because God wants it. If that were true, then everyone would be saved right now because God wants it. I tell you, sometimes, sometimes when I'm preaching, if you preachers are watching right now, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes when I'm preaching, I just want to stop and say, Selah, Selah, <laughs> like the psalmist said, Selah. In other words, let's just stop. Let's think about this for a few minutes. Let's just meditate, take a verse. Okay, Jesus is in the house. And anytime the word, Jesus, the word is in the house, Remember, I'm the house he's living in. The word is in the house. Then the power is in the house. This is what I'm going to, we're going to be, I'm, I can tell we're running out of time. We'll have to pick it up next program. But you're going to see it's not hard to take hold of the power because it's, it's not up in heaven. See, a lot of people want to, well, I got to pray the power down. Let's pray the power down, man. If the power falls, we'll be healed. No, wait a minute. The power's in the house. The power was present to heal them. Now, this is very interesting. The power was present to heal them, and yet them were not getting healed. In fact, the power was present to heal, and nothing was happening. Come on, the guy had not come through the roof yet. Nothing was happening other than Jesus' teaching. But the Bible says at the end of the verse, the power was present to heal. The power was present and nothing happening. I've heard people say before, man, I'll tell you what, you should have been to our church today. We had the power of God present. And you could ask other people, what, what do you think that means, the power of God was present? And some people say, well, uh, you know, we had miracles. Uh, people came out of wheelchairs. You know, people got filled with the Holy Ghost. People got delivered. That's what people would think if they say the power was present. But this verse says the power was present and nothing was happening. Come on now. Nothing was happening. God's power was present. So that shows me right there. God's power can actually be present in the building, in our bodies, in, in, and nothing happening if no faith is released. God's power was present. 
and yet the building wasn't shaking. Jesus was in there and the power of God was present and the building wasn't shaking. Nobody, no bodies were shaking. Nobody was falling under the power. And yet God said his power was present and it tells us it was present to heal them, which means them were sick and it doesn't say some of them. That means it was God's will to heal all of them. And the power was even right there, available. They didn't have to pray it down, didn't have to try and go find it, didn't have to go get somebody to get it for them. It was there, right in front of their face. And they weren't getting healed. Man, I wanted to point this out because, listen, God's power is present with us anytime, anywhere. Why? Dr. Jesus is in the house. The power of God is present anywhere, at any time, for anything. And nothing is beyond the scope of this power to heal. I don't care if you've been injured, wounded, lost a body part. God can recreate. God can do any of this. When you and I release faith, grace flows. And then power is ignited and great things happen. All right. Well, we're out of time. We're going to have to pick this up next program. I'm sure glad you're staying with me because we are saying some awesome truths in this, in these programs that are just really helping people. I know they're helping you. So thank you for joining us and thank you partners for supporting us financially. You are helping us reach other people that haven't hooked up yet to help us reach other people. We're just going to keep doing that. As long as people are enjoying and learning the program, we're going to keep reaching more people. So thank you. Thank you so much. I love you. I call you blessed. Have a wonderful Jesus filled day. We'll see you next program. God bless you. Many believers around the world have fed their faith to be healed by listening to God's word on Heaven's Health Food. On this recording, Larry Hutton quotes all the Bible scriptures about health and healing from many versions of the Bible. So you can come to a full understanding that God wants you to be whole, well, and healthy. Just like the faith to be saved comes by hearing God's word about Jesus and salvation, faith to be healed comes by hearing God's word about healing. Spending time listening to these healing scriptures will help you establish forever that God intends for you to be well and that he has already provided for your healing in Jesus Christ. To order Heaven's Health Food, go to LarryHutton.org or call us at 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.